What's up guys, welcome to an edition of Market Brothers. We in the market, one trade at a time. For you to Market Brothers, the investment channel helps you to find the best deals in the market. If that's something you're interested in. Make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. Uh, make sure you also that thumbs up, like, comment, and share. So, I hope you guys last week were able to lock in those Apple calls. Um, I know Apple had a crazy run up uh, after uh, WWDC 20. Um, and you know, Talked about it last week on the video, so hope you all were able uh, to lock in those calls and profit from that. Um, I know a couple people probably a couple people did, so you know happy about that. Uh, I know I did, so I was happy about that as well. So you know, good luck to you all out there, uh, and let's jump into uh, this week's video. So for my first one on my watch list for this week, I got ticker sign FTX for FedEx. Uh, moving average 10 is 130.32, moving average 50 is 129.84, and the moving average 100 is 129.84. So, I will be doing a side-by-side -side comparison between uh, Robinhood as well as Webull. So, if you want to join both those platforms, uh, down below in the description, you can sign up for them and get free stock. So, if that's something you're interested in, it'll be in the description uh, down below. Now, you know, the market in general has been uh, pretty crazy. Um, you know, a lot of moves going on. Um, but, you know, there's still profits to be made out there. So, just bear that in mind. Uh, you know, it's not all down it's not all negative but you know you can benefit from both ends of that um and you know the whole point of this channel is just to have growth to help people uh to grow their accounts grow your small account to big account um you know if you have a big account you know make more money with that so you know that's the whole goal of it and hope these videos are helping uh everyone out uh it's the whole goal of it now, um, on Wheel Platform, I have three different metrics that I like to go and look at. Uh, it's the moving average 10, 50, and 100, uh, which would be this red line, purple line, and yellow line. So, you know, just bear in mind that when you get the uh, Webull app that it may not have all three of these metrics, uh, but if you go to... Uh, the settings tab in the corner you can have all these different metrics uh, change the color and you know do stuff like that as well um, I'm also using uh, the one minute interval so these charts may be a little bit more uh, dramatic than if you use 15 5 and 30 minute as well so jump into some background information on um, on FedEx uh, we can see you know it kind of ended the week uh, starting on a, a little bit of a bearish pattern, uh, but started off uh, towards the end of the day, um, you know, on a bullish pattern, um, across the moving average 50 and the moving average 100, which to me, you know, signifies a bullish uh, uptrend. But then, you know, started going a little bit bearish towards the end of the end of the uh, day, and they ended at 130.08, uh, which is denoted by. Uh, this value right here in blue. So, you know, starting to get towards uh, that moving average uh, 10, I mean, moving average 100 and moving average 50. Now, going to the background information on them, um, we can see, you know, they got some uh, press releases and stuff that they got going on. Uh, FedEx uh, Logistics helps to fight against the whole Roni situation uh, by distributing personal protective equipment or basically PPE. Uh, to hospitals throughout Latin America. Um, FedEx encourages entrepreneurs to apply for the hashtag support small $1 million uh, grants. Uh, FedEx office offices help America get back to business, so help people printing off signs and, you know, flyers and banners and things of that nature. Uh, and then also FedEx and Microsoft join forces uh, to transfer commerce. Um, so basically trying to help, you know, commerce and people who sell small businesses uh, that were affected um, by, you know, the whole uh, Rony situation as, as well as rioting and, you know, all the other stuff all the other stuff that's going on, uh, you know, all over the world. So, you know, Microsoft and FedEx teaming up, uh, hopefully they can help, you know, find some uh, more solutions to help people promote their uh, commerce moving forward. Uh, now going into uh, some another one, uh, we have Q4 of FY20, so basically the uh, quarter four of 
their financials is going to be released on the 30th of June. Uh, so that is going to be next Tuesday at 5 p.m. Uh, if you Google uh, FedEx press releases, you can find this link. Um, you can click on webcast down here and basically join in uh, to the call or to the webcast uh, and listen to the earnings uh, and all the financials. Now, this stuff is, you know, pretty important um, as far as investing is concerned because financials, to me, in my opinion, are the number one thing that drive uh a company find well yeah financials in my opinion is number one that I'll say news and articles like that are number two um, now news and articles uh, you know of updates and stuff uh, definitely drive a company but financials to me is what you know actual investors or people who want to buy into the company actually um, look forward to so a company with good financials you can ensure that you know people will buy um you know more certain more certainly or i guess uh in larger quantities than if they have just good news uh good news to me doesn't really last that long more than financials does so that's just the way i look at it uh with all that being said though i think a put is the best option now this is on the Robinhood platform um uh and if you're new to Robinhood coming from Webull, if you're new to Webull uh, going to Robinhood, I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of both of those, but I'm going to start with Robinhood uh, for this one. So maybe saying, why am I saying a put? I think that, you know, the company in general was hit a lot harder than they may have, you know, put off or, you know, stated that they were. And I think, you know, that's definitely going to be a reflected in their financials. Um, I don't think any company can predict, you know, the craziness that's gone on uh, in the United States and basically the world in all of 2020. I don't think anybody was really ready for 2020. Um, and, you know, especially, you know, as everything's going moving forward. Now, people may say, you know, well, the company may do really good because they shipped a lot of, uh, you know, hand sanitizer and PPE to people. But, you know... I don't think that helped as much as it hindered, if that makes sense. Um, so, you know, I think, you know, financially, it didn't really help them make more money um, by people, you know, shipping hand sanitizer and stuff like that, because that would be saying that they just solely used FedEx. But that's not the case. You got FedEx, UPS, USPS, um, you know, and other shipping methods to do that. Um, and then also when it came to the fact, you know, you actually had the government itself, you know, shipping stuff. So, um, you know, I don't think that uh, the pandemic actually, you know, helped them as much as people may be thinking that it helped them. But that's just my opinion on that. Um, and I think a put probably the best option. Now, uh, put with the strike price of between 105 uh, to 123, uh, I think is a good option. Uh, if you're looking to pay between 102 and uh, 718 on the Robinhood platform. Uh, now, I only buy calls and I buy puts. I don't sell calls and sell puts. So, just bear that in mind if you're looking at the video. Also, bear in mind that uh, if you get the Webull um, and Robinhood or if you sign up for Webull or you sign up for Robinhood, that you will have to fill out an application in order to be able to trade options. Uh, so just bear that in mind. Um, you don't automatically get options when you sign up for the platforms. You'll have to actually fill out an application for both of those. Uh, but once you do get approved, you'll be able to uh, go back and reference this video uh, and begin trading options. So it's a pretty easy process. It doesn't really take that long. Uh, and then once you get approved, you know you don't have to really do anything else uh, for that approval. Also, you know, um, while talking about options, uh, you know, I want to touch on the fact that, you know, there was a trader um, out there who, you know, talked about a lot recently, um, who actually, you know, killed himself for uh, stuff that was going on on Robin Hood, um, told him that he had like a negative, you know, 700, and I think it was like $730,000 uh, dollar uh, deficit. Um, now, you know, I'm not saying, you know, ditch Robin Hood and go to Webull and sign up now for Webull. Um, but, you know, I haven't faced any of those problems on Webull with, you know, crazy numbers like that. Um, and I think, you know, 
I think Robin Hood is definitely putting in measures to help, um, you know, mitigate that in the future. Um, because, you know, it's pretty tragic uh, when any, you know, young person or person in general, uh, you know, takes their life uh, basically off of something that could have been prevented by the app. Um, now, I'm not saying, you know, options is bad, um, but you definitely can lose money in options. And you could gain a whole bunch of money in options. Um, you know, their risk in, you know, doing it both ways. So you can get really wealthy uh, doing options or you can lose a whole bunch of money really quickly uh, doing options. Uh, but, you know, you know, prayers for the guy's family. Um, and, you know, that's why part of the reason why I try to have my channel like this uh, to help people out there and make more informed decisions, um, you know, just to show people, hey, this is where you can find this information at. Because I think, you know, if you would have, found more information out there, you know, or had somebody or a video or something he could have referenced, then maybe it would have uh, made a difference um, in his life. So, you know, shout out to uh, all the creators out there and all the people who are uh, trading and day trading and, you know, trading options. Uh, but, you know, it is a very risky business. Um, and, you know, do your due diligence, make sure you know everything you're doing before you try to execute these calls and puts um, and, you know, learn as much information as possible f before you jump into the market. And if you don't know, you know, try to find somebody who does know, you know, try to find a video like this one or try to go online and find another video uh, and, and try to figure out, you know, how stuff is going on. If you don't know uh, the answer to something, you know, don't be afraid to comment on a video uh, down below and say, hey, you know, this is what's going on with my account. You know, if somebody, um, you know, could help me figure out what's going on. And, you know, if you follow a channel and, you know, you know, you asking those sorts of questions and whoever runs the channel or, you know, anybody commenting on the channel doesn't help you, you know, don't follow that channel. There's no point in subscribing to, you know, people who can't or or won't answer your questions you know the whole point of this is to help people it's not to you know try to go and make as much money as possible and you know this is social media it's basically driven by people so you know better than mine i try to answer all the comments in the comment section if i don't know i try to figure out the information or try to point someone in the right direction for the information uh because you know that guy could have been me. Um, you know, there have been days I've lost quite a bit of money, uh, especially on days where Robin Hood glitches and the app doesn't work. Um, but, you know, just bear in mind, you know, there are people out there who actually will take the time to listen to uh, uh, you all trading out there. I don't think they're, you know, any question that's dumb. I think, you know, if you just don't know, you don't know. So I think it's our goal um, as creators to try to help uh, answer those questions, you know, if we're saying we're the voice or the person who is trying to point you in the right direction, then I think it's our job to try to help point you in the right direction and not just say, oh, you know, I've got views today. So, you know, that's good. I don't have to answer your question because, you know, I got your subscription or your view. I think it's, it's people's lives and people's money. You should take that seriously. So that being said, uh, on Webull, there's a call section and a put section, so it's not the same as on Robinhood where you show you on Robinhood, you click this tab right here uh, for call for sales and for buys, uh, and then you click this section for calls and for puts. On a Webull, they put all this information out here for you. So on here, uh, where it says bid, that's going to be for buy, where it says ask, it's going to be for sell, um, and then vice versa for put side. So the left-hand side is for all calls. Right hand side is for all puts. Then they also have this median line in the middle uh, for actual um, where the price ended. So it's kind of the same as uh, this one where the share price ended. Um, and it's going to be right here uh, for the Webull platform. So we're looking uh, for, six, uh, for 105 to 123. So we have 105 right here. Uh, then we said buy put. So it's really cheap on here at uh, $4. And then for 
123 we have 535 so that's 535 dollars um, basically four dollars on here so this is to buy a put and this is to buy a put so just bear in mind this bid is buy section uh, on here so yeah this one's a lot cheaper um, but you know platforms different platforms uh, do different things it's not going to be the same one-on-one -on -one. Uh, so just bear that in mind uh, when doing uh, the different platforms also bear in mind this is based on uh, stagnant price because the market is closed so all these prices are going to change once the market is open um, so just bear that in mind it's not going to be the actual price once the market actually opens it may go up may go down uh, who knows based on uh, what that share price actually does so jumping into my next one uh, that I have on here is Tennyson GIS that's for General Mills uh, moving average 10 is 5934 moving average 50 is 5931 moving average 100 is 5943 in the end of the week at 59.21, so below their moving average 10, 50, and 100. So, you know, on a very bearish trend, um, seems to be kind of broke through, tried to start a bullish trend uh, when they broke through the moving average uh, 50, uh, but didn't quite make it all the way up to break through the moving average uh, 100. Uh, they tested it right here. Uh, it seems like they tested the moving average 100, uh, but then immediately sold. Uh, so, the moving average 100 to me seems to be uh, quite a strong resistance line uh, to where they actually need to break through in order to get uh, to that bullish trend. So going to some background information on them, uh, just reading some of the articles on here, just Google uh, press releases uh, for General Mills, you'll come up with this page. Uh, General Mills announces availability of fiscal 2020 fourth quarter and full year earnings financial results. Uh, that article came out on the 25th, so a couple days ago. Um, and then June 16th, General Mills launches uh, three-year generative da dairy pilot, uh, Michigan and Partners, uh, with Freemost Farms and Understanding AG. Uh, General Mills named on 3BL Media's 100 Best Corporate Citizens of 2020. Uh, so, you know, a lot of stuff going on with the company. Um, you know, a lot of things uh, moving forward. Uh, going into uh, their uh, financial results, uh, they're actually going to be announcing that on the 1st. So, if you Google the, the press releases and click on the first link, uh, which was the June 25th one, you'll come up with this link. Uh, then you can actually, you know, view uh, the results for their earnings on July 1st. So, that's Wednesday of next week. So, you know, a pretty big week. You got FedEx and then you also got um, General Mills. So, it tells you the time, pre-release at approximately 6 a.m., uh, and then pre-recorded management remarks at approximately 6.20. Um, and then it says live question and answer session uh, for, ana for analysis with uh, the chairman and CEO. So, you know, a lot of good information uh, going on with that. Uh, so, you know, you can go in and listen to that uh, as an investor. You don't have to have any special pass or permission or anything uh, to do that. So, you know, you just go in, uh, listen to the the call, listen to the questions, um, and then, you know, make a more informed decision before you start actually investing in a call or a put, or if you want to buy the stock before you invest into buying the stock. Uh, so, you know, the more information you know, the better. Um, just trying to point you all in the direction on where to get that information. But for me, I think a call is the best option, uh, and I'll say, you know, it may be the opposite of what people are thinking, but uh, just in my personal opinion, uh, from the products that they make, like cereal, breakfast items, uh, I think those definitely have not been in a deficit. Uh, as far as 2020 is concerned, it's kind of been one of the stable things uh, that people have bought is breakfast items. Um, so, you know, I think people continue to buy breakfast items, uh, like cereal and, you know, pastries and things of that nature uh you know i know a lot of people bought it uh when they were locked in uh you know people got kids kids eat cereal uh grown people eat cereal uh you know adults eat cereal teenagers eat cereal you know everybody eats breakfast basically so you know i think you know their sales probably went up uh 
as the pandemic went on, and I think that's carrying on into uh, this quarter. Um, and I think we'll continue to uh, to grow. Uh, so I think a call uh, with the strike price between sixty to sixty five dollars is probably the best option. Uh, you're looking here on here on the Robinhood platform to be um, buying between two hundred sixteen dollars to fifty eight dollars. Uh, so just bear that in mind. These are based off this stagnant share price, um, and this is going to be on the strike price of August twenty first. So a lot further out than uh. The July 31st date that I've had on there, but I think, you know, it'll give it time for it to actually, um, you know, this call to actually uh, execute. So I think that's enough time uh, for the sales to actually come out, you know, people, the market to actually uh, reflect that price from those earnings. So going to the Weeble platform, going into uh, the options tab, we're going to find GIS. Uh, for General Mills, and then we said on a date of the 21st August, so we're going to click on that one, uh, we said a call between 60 to 65, um, so let's go down to 60 to 65, so 60 to 65, um, bear in mind this left hand side, uh, if you all can't see it, I'll scroll up. So left hand side is call, and then this is the buy. If you have, if you go over it, over it, hover over it, it'll tell you buy and sell. So you have buy right here, which you'll click on the buy right here. Um, you have buy. Uh, so you're looking to pay uh, from sixty uh, to sixty five strike price uh, between two hundred and ten dollars to forty two dollars. Uh, per contract, so just bear that in mind. It looks like they have about 50 of them that they're trying to sell, uh, and they have about 31 of them that are trying to sell to 210. So just bear in mind, uh, this X uh, is how many people are selling it. Um, so you know, that's for the call side on there. Um, so go through. Um, and just compare side to side. Prices are not going to be one to one because they're two different platforms. Uh, but whatever platform you like, uh, there's an option for that. Um, so going into my next one, uh, we got ticker side CAG, and this is for uh, Conagra Brands. Moving average 10 is 32.68. Moving average 50 is 32.70. And the moving average 100 is 32.72. Uh, they ended the week at 32.64. Um, to me, on a bearish trend, even though, um, you know, it tried to bounce back up. Uh, but I would say bearish in the sense that it, it had a large drop off um, where it dropped off uh, from, went past its moving average 50. Uh, moving went past we were average 10 50 and 10 and went all the way down to uh 3264 so we average 10 3268 we average 50 3270 and we average 100 3272 and it ended at 3264 so yeah um to me that's still uh pretty bearish um because it dropped off so much uh now bullish you know the way I do the analysis, I would say this was definitely a bullish trend uh, just because, you know, it went up and it shot up all the way, you know, above its moving average uh, 50 and it started to go up above its moving average um, 100. So, you know, you may be following this line to be like, okay, this is the line that I follow and this line didn't go up. Uh, but you know, the actual price itself is the one that you want to track. So, you know, the price here hit 32.74, which is above its moving average 50. So I would say, okay, it started its bullish, uh, you know, uptrend. Then it went up a little bit more. Uh, I would say, okay, it's still, you know, on its bullish uptrend. Then I'd say, okay, it hit here, still on its bullish uptrend. Still bullish uh, when it hit 32.81. And then as soon as it dropped off right here to uh, 32.74, I'd be like, okay, it started its bearish trend. So, you know, that's how I would set uh, a stop loss on that one. Uh, and I would say, you know, even if I was down here, we could do it with this side. I would say, okay, you know, we went a little bullish, then it went bearish. Then I would have seen, okay, this candlestick went all the way up here, um, went to 32.70. I'm like, okay, it's starting to begin its, bear, its bullish uh, trend. 
starting to go and uh, become bullish because it shot up down here, went up to its uh, moving average uh, 50, and it went above that uh, to right here. So I would say, okay, it started to become bullish. So, you know, you would have bought it at 3270 and then, you know, sold at 3281 and you say, oh, man, it's not, uh, or sold at uh, 3274 and you say, okay, ah, oh, man, that's only forty. That's only four cents, you know. But that's four cents times however many, you know, shares you would have got if you were doing doing it that way. Uh, you know that those profits, those small profits, do add up. So just bear that in mind. That's how I personally read charts. Uh, but I don't like to just read charts by themselves. I like to go into some background information. Uh, so with that being said, let's go into some background information on them. Um. On the 16th, it says that they are recognized as one of the 50 most community-minded companies in the United States for second consecutive year, um, recognized winner of annually by employee-led sustainable development programs, uh, announces Ms. Butterworth's rebrand review, um, approach to diversity and inclusion, and then it says, announced uh, details for fiscal 2024 quarter, uh, earnings release, webcast, and conference call. Um, so, you know, they're trying to do the rebranding for Miss Butterworth. Uh, it's been in the news, the whole uh, diversity and inclusion, um, you know, situation that's going on with the country. Uh, you know, not here to talk about politics, um, but, you know, here to talk about the financials. Uh, so... Let's go into uh, that press release. So that came out on June 2nd, but they're saying that they're going to announce it on the 30th. So next Tuesday as well, you're going to have General Mills as well as um, uh, this company announcing their earnings. Uh, so you'll just go... Uh, Click on that press release tab. Uh, they have a call number on here where you can call in. It says, please dial in 10 to 15 minutes prior to the call starting. Uh, so, you know, you can go in and listen to it. Um, you know, get you some good information on the earnings uh, because that's the part that really matters. Um, you know, all this other stuff that they're doing, uh, approach to diversity and inclusion, uh, Miss Butterworth uh, rebranding, you know, that stuff is important. But, you know, the most important part to me is the company's earnings and how they're performing in the long run. Um, you know, what companies do on the outside, you know, is also important. How they're seen by the public is important. But to me, how they're seen by the investment community uh, is the most important. And that is uh, through financials. So uh, look forward to that. That's coming out on uh, next week. So. Uh, with that being said, I think a call is probably the best option. Uh, to me, I put them in line kind of with General Mills. Uh, this is the company that makes like Slim Jims and Orville Rettenbacher popcorn. Uh, so, you know, if you know those two names, then you know, okay, uh, popcorn and Slim Jims, you know, people still eat those. Maybe more popcorn than Slim Jims. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, you know, those are household names. It's not like any, you know, abstract uh, name that any, nobody's heard of before. Um, so, you know, I think, uh, it'll make those, uh, number, I think those numbers are actually going to be really good, uh, for this company. So I think it calls the best option, uh, between 34 to $35, uh, with the July 31st expiration, I think it's going to be the best option. Um, so between 34 to 35, you're going to be looking to pay between $98 uh, to $65 on the Robinhood platform. Uh, so jumping into the Webull platform, let's look up that company. So 2% CAG. And then we have an expiration of July 31st. Let's give computer some time to figure out what it's doing. And then we can see on 34 to 35 for the 31st. Let's find 34. Be down here. So 34, 
uh, the 35, uh, and we're going to be buying a call, so bear in mind, call, bid, that's the buy, uh, between 34 to 35, uh, we can see you would pay between $80 to $55 on the Webull platform, so that's, you know, price you pay uh, based on, you know, the current strike price, I mean, the current price, uh, and, you know, based off this strike price as well. So the middle column is the strike price on options for Webull. Um, so you'll be looking to pay between uh, 80 to $55 per contract on Webull platform. So going into my last one uh, for the week, uh, we got tickers on DIS for Disney, uh, a repeat, um, you know, of previous weeks. Um, but I think, you know, with the... Uh, all the stuff going on, uh, I think, you know, it's definitely one to keep your eye out on. Um, if we see they've been on a pretty bullish pattern uh, going up, they're above their moving average 10 and 100. Uh, so their moving average 10 is 108.99, moving average 50 is 108.60, and moving average 100 is 108.54. And they ended the week at 109.10, so they're above their moving average you know, 10, 50, and 100, uh, which to me, you know, shows them on a bullish uptrend. Also, bear in mind, this is a one-minute interval chart, which is what I like to look at. Uh, so, you know, bullish as far as that is concerned, uh, how they ended the week. Uh, so let's jump into some press releases from them. Uh, we can see uh, Walt Disney Company pledges $5 million to support nonprofit organizations that advance social justice. Um Carlos A. Gomez, named treasurer of Walt Disney Company. Uh, so it's a pretty big, um, you know, company move. Um, in general, in my opinion, uh, you know, moving executives or people high up definitely make a large impact on the company as a whole. Um, Walt Disney Resort uh, executives who submit proposal for phased reopening of parks. Uh, new leadership team announced at Disney Park experienced and uh, products, experiences and products. So, you know, a lot of uh, moves going on in the company uh, towards the late A and, and the beginning of June. So, you know, the article, you know, that kind of stood out to me um, is Walt Disney Resort uh, executives to submit proposal for phase reopening of parks. Um, so basically, you know, this is, uh, it says, submitted to the Orange County Economic Recovery Task Force in Florida, phase reopening of resorts, parks. Uh, resorts, theme parks, uh, and then it shows the people who they submitted it to. Um, but to me, you know, seeing the spike in cases in Florida, you know, numbers almost double. And, you know, one of their main money makers at Disney is being going to Florida and them opening back up. Uh, I definitely see some backlash or, you know, have seen some backlash uh, from that as cases go up. Uh, you know, I don't really see people trying to risk um, their personal health as well as the health uh, and safety of their children to go to um, the Disney Resort. So, you know, even though it is open, you know, they have procedures in place to try to, you know, mitigate the risk. I definitely think that financially they're still going to, you know, face it. Uh, a deficit as far as the amount of people going to the the parks is concerned um, also you know them changing some of the stuff in the park uh, you know to make it more friendly um, you know and, and less uh, racially divided uh, some of the stuff uh, was outdated and people were talking about some of their rides uh, being racist and stuff like that but you know to me financially uh, which is the main point uh, that people should be focusing on. Uh, they, they are losing money uh, by people not being able to go because of the uh, pandemic situation. So, you know, drop a comment down below. Tell me what you guys' thoughts is on that. Uh, do you think uh, having Disney open is a good thing or a bad thing for the company uh, long term? Uh, would you see yourself taking, uh, you know, your kids to Disney parks, you know, 
if everyone there was you know required to wear a mask is that safe enough or you know they're disinfecting rides is that safe enough uh for me personally i think it's you know a little too soon maybe you know people going to florida to the beach or something or something where they can actually distance themselves but i don't see how people are going to be able to distance themselves at a theme park uh and it be you know that safe i think you know roni is still something people are trying to combat and figure out the right and wrong ways uh to do that uh Yes, there are procedures in place, so I'm not saying, you know, the company as a whole is, is neglecting the fact that uh, it's an issue. I know lots of people, lots of uh, companies are trying to uh, do as best as they can to help that. But I think for the average consumer, um, you know, it's still something that is in the back of their mind and something, you know, that they can, that they're hesitating or hesitant to want to go and put so much money into uh, doing it, so, you know, Disney ain't free, so, you know, you're putting a lot of money into going to some place that may put yourself, uh, and your family at risk, so I think, you know, it may be something that, uh, people may, uh, be hesitant to do, so with that being said, I think a put is the best option, uh, in my personal opinion, uh, because I definitely see a deficit as people are not going to be going to the parks as much as they would have in previous years. So year over year, uh, you know, definitely see the parks, um, you know, actual revenue going down. Um, and I think that's going to affect the company's financials uh, in the long term as far as, you know, next earnings, uh, things of that nature going on. Uh, so I think a put is the best option between ninety to one hundred and five dollars. Um, so you know you're looking to pay between one hundred and ninety six dollars per contract uh, to five hundred and seventy dollars per contract, um, and that is on the Robinhood platform uh, with an expiration of the twenty first of August. So going into um, the Webull platform, we're going to look up DIS for Disney. And then we said August the 21st, so and then we said a price between 90 to 105. So right here, 90 uh, to 105, but bear in mind we're doing uh, the buy put side. So this is put, bid is buy. So buy, you're looking at between $185 per contract to $560 per contract. So, you know, those are just my, you know, opinions on that. Um, you know, ways that I think that Disney, you know, could mitigate um, these is basically, you know, focusing on Disney Plus and, you know, make it more movies and stuff like that, you know, partnering with, uh, you know, having Disney, I think it'd be cool if Disney had like Disney exclusive movies that they made sort of like, you know, Netflix and Apple is kind of doing, uh, but, you know, movies that are just released on their platform. So like, let's say, you know, they had a new Cars movie or a new Toy Story movie or, you know, a new Marvel movie, and, you know, since their, you know, theaters and things of that nature aren't opening back up as readily, you know, I think one way that they could regain that revenue that they're losing in parks is to have a Disney Plus only exclusive releases, so, you know, not send it to Netflix, not send it to Hulu, not send it to anyone else, but just focus directly on the Disney Plus platform. So I think if, you know, they had those, then it may regain some of the money and subscriptions to Disney Plus. Um, you know, have it, you know, release it on DVD uh, or it's not really old on DVD. Release it as digital download uh, or release it in, you know, streaming from the Disney Plus service and, you know, just have it as a Disney exclusive. I think they have the infrastructure, um, you know, and capabilities to do that and not, you know, share it with anyone else. So let's say, you know, they want to do um, a new, I guess, Marvel movie. I would say, you know, don't put it in theaters. Just put it directly on Disney Plus. 
Uh, you can only access it through Disney Plus, or you can stream it through a Disney service. So, you know, to me, that would help them to regain a lot of money that they lost in the parks. Uh, but if that's possible, I don't know. Uh, but definitely is a strategy uh, that, you know, could be used to help regain some of this uh, lost revenue from parks. Now, it's not a permanent thing. I don't think that uh, permanently they're going to lose, you know, a whole bunch of money as long term. But you got to think we have another season coming up uh, where flu season is going to be coming back. It's right around the corner. So, you know, it's kind of this is the time in order to regain, you know, that money because then you're going to have that season where people aren't going to be going out. And then, you know, then there's you have to wait again for another summer. So, you know, you know, hope that they can return or hope that they can uh, figure a solution to that. But as for now, I'm still bearish on the company as a whole. Uh, so drop a comment down below. Make sure that thumbs up button. Tell me what you guys are looking at for next week. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. We'll